His name is Gino Oriema. The name of his game is women's basketball. Not so long ago, the sport was little more than an indulgence in the big-time industry of college sports. And Oriema, just another anonymous assistant coach working his way up the minor league basketball ladder. Then 18 years ago came a modest offer from a backwater team in a backwater school. UConn, the University of Connecticut, and Gino haven't been the same since. There are a few better at the game than the UConn Huskies, the four-time and current national champions. And at a million plus a year, Gino's the highest paid coach in the game. The record, 167 wins against eight losses over five years, speaks for itself. And on the court, no one speaks louder than Gino. We can't be standing out here waiting to get trapped. You understand? We're already done with that. Let's go. It's time to attack him now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Together. One, two, three. Together. Together. He is the Gino Show, a whale in what was the puddle of women's basketball. UConn, the national champions. He's brought four national championships and millions of dollars in revenue to a mid-sized state university that seldom made the headlines. The Connecticut women's basketball team has built a virtual cult following among these otherwise undemonstrative Swamp Yankees. Every game's a sellout. 16,000 rabid Husky fanatics under one roof. And hey, this is hard as hell, right? If it was easy, everybody would be undefeated, number one. This is hard as hell. It's supposed to be. The unrelenting daily drills are a hallmark of Gino's basketball program. That's just unbelievable. Really, Not a really trace is. of sensitivity in evidence. I said this a hundred times. Some of you guys must cheat in school. You got to. You got to be cheating. Because you can't make that many decisions that are wrong. Sarcasm. How many times do I have to say it? See, that's my... <laughs> Impatience take the place of gender awareness. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! You're very tough on, on, the, on the players. Jessica, to what extent uh, is that in itself an act? Never. You really are as... It's not, it's not an act. ...ticked off as you seem mm -hmm. to be. Mm-hmm. Because if it was an act, I think they'd read through it. So it's real. It, it is absolutely positively real. Come on, man. Players and people break down mentally before they break down physically, I believe. So you're not just training them to run and jump and do things. You're training them, hopefully, to think under pressure. And to do that, you must practice a certain kind of chauvinist philosophy. I think women at this level, but I also believe women in general, I think have this burning desire to please. Like, I want to do what you want me to do. Like, if you, coach, you want me to do this, I really want to do that. So if you tell me I didn't do it well enough, it bothers them, personally. Here we go. Gino looks for the best high school athletes who can take what? his verbal assaults. Did that seem unnatural? In the fiercely competitive you game of college right. recruiting, he that plays is. the choreographer right. of a so chorus that's line. Going on, and here comes the ball. I've tried to use the uh, Broadway analogy with a lot of kids. Uh, you're a performer. And in women's basketball, uh, this has become Broadway. It's where the most fans are, the most attention. Um, so why would you want to apply your trade anywhere else other than Broadway? And what, are the, what do other coaches tell them about why they shouldn't come to Connecticut? Why they shouldn't come to Connecticut? Ah, uh, you're not going to like that guy. He's a jerk. The winningest jerk in Connecticut history. Off the court, a wife, two daughters, and a son an upstanding member of the community. On the court, the jerk emerges. I, I'm not talking about that. We already screwed it up. I'm talking about, why would you leave that guy open? You're the coach everyone loves to hate, correct? Why is that? <laughs> why? Because we win all the time. Simple as that. Among other things. What are the other things? <laughs> I'm not exactly the right face that you would want to put on women's basketball. He plays the villain. He says things which he knows are going to irritate the women's coaches that he knows don't like him. Sports Illustrated writer and UConn fan Frank DeFord says Gino is not exactly a poster boy for women's basketball. If you were casting for the coach of a, 
of a women's basketball team, you would not cast Gino. But this good-looking, sharp, daddy-o, you know, with the curly, the whole bit, there's no way that they're going to bring him in. And DeFord says Gino plays his role to the hilt. Well, he starts with the tie, untied, you know, loose, but perfectly untied, loose, <laughs> as if he'd had a valet come in and do that ahead of time. That's part of it. The hands on the hips, this kind of pose, the walking up and down, screaming, and then the assistant coaches will, will, will come in. It's almost, almost choreographed like wrestling. He's got the act down pat, and he's the only guy out there. Usually he's the only guy. He's this, this one man in this sea of femininity. Gino Oriema came to this country from Italy at the age of seven. He learned about basketball and about life the old-fashioned immigrant way. You speak any English? No. So what'd you do? Fake it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend. Um, I learned through sports. You hang out with the kids in the playground, you pick it up quickly, and I was taught a valuable lesson in grade school by the nuns and, and, and the teachers at my grade school. They said, look, in June, the kids that are really smart go on to third grade, the kids that are not stay in second grade. And my aunt interpreted for me and she said to me, you understand? I said, absolutely. There was no English as a second language, there's no stay after school and we'll work with you. You either get it or you try again next year. You run this team the way the nuns ran, ran you and the school. I try to run it like you would if you had 12 kids. <laughs> And you say, all right, now, do I just let it go, like, whatever happens, happens, or do I have certain rules and regulations that everyone can agree on would make this thing work? Can I talk to you guys? The huddle's yours. So tell me, what do you think of him? He's all right. He's okay? Most of the time, he's all right. He's the man. Yeah. yeah. Is he a good listener? He's very good. As long as you're telling him how great he is and everything, he'll listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Gino treats his stars, like senior Diana Taurasi, no differently than anyone else. Does Gino understand women? He does. And, you know, we always say he's probably a woman, too. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, he's got mood swings like a woman, too. You know, he's got a little girl in him, I guess. <laughs> but, Coach, he does understand women. He, you know what? He understands what gets under them the most. Like, I think that's what helps him the most. It's psychological. He gets in your head. He knows how to. He knows what, what, push, what buttons to push uh, to get what he wants from his players. And, and sometimes you don't like it. The line that a coach has to walk is, do, does your team right now need to be inflated individually and collectively, even if it's artificially? Or does your team need to be told the truth and, and, and knocked down? And sometimes you say something to a player, and today you're right, and you say the same thing tomorrow, and tomorrow you're wrong. And, I mean, we're dealing, we're talking 12 women here. So, I mean, you could be right at 11 o'clock in the morning and be wrong at 12.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> when we first paid a visit to UConn at the beginning of this season, the Huskies were on their usual roll, undefeated in their first nine games. The kind of perfect performance their fans had grown accustomed to. And then, the unthinkable. After leading Duke by 14 points, with less than four minutes to play, Connecticut collapsed. Lazy asses. No. We are lazy mentally. I've been saying that for three months. We are lazy. And it's showing up right now. With only five seconds left, Duke had fought back and tied the game. Then Tarasi put her team back up by two. But it was too late. Duke hit the basketball equivalent of a Grand Slam home run with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The final buzzer, a three-pointer. And total shock. Losing? What is losing? It's just, I don't seem right. It's not right. It's, it's unexplainable, really. I mean, in some ways, it's so easy to explain, but in other ways, it's unexplainable. This is a huge turn of events, and he now is ready to charge again. And a week later, it happened again. Another loss, this time to an also-ran Notre Dame. Wow, I haven't seen this out of Gino never. before. I have never seen Gino this way. 
It's not just pressure on, on the team and on, on Gino to win. It's to win every time. Yeah. To never lose. That's tough stuff. He has created a monster in which people expect UConn to win every game. And not only to win every game, they expected to win every game by 20 or 30 points. I mean, when they have close games and only win by 10 or 12, you know, the people in Connecticut said, what happened last night? What's the matter? Are, we, are they losing it? I mean, and so when they lose a game, it's like the universe has been turned upside down. It happened in 1999. 1999, we had a lousy year. We were 29 and 5. <laughs> now you're laughing. Everybody was devastated. They expect perfection. Correct. They expect you will never lose. Correct. How do you deal with that? It drives me crazy. But that's how I am. So I'm kind of a tortured soul here. So I just deal with it with, okay, that's why I get paid a lot of money. We're going to win every game. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and you keep your fingers crossed. See? And you keep your fingers crossed. And you utter an almost silent prayer. Tonight's just another game for us. For them, this is revenge. <laughs> them, the Lady Volunteers of Tennessee. Gino calls them the evil empire. His ladies beat them in last year's national championship. So it's a grudge match. Tennessee on home turf in Knoxville is out for blood and Gino's carefully coiffed scalp. Let the game begin. Very close for a while, but then the Gino show took over. His Huskies ran away with it, 81 to 67. Good job, Gino. How much of the win is in the head? All of it. First you win the game in your head, then you win it on the court with your body. First you see it, then you do it. So, yeah, Yogi was right. 90% of the game is half mental. <laughs> <laughs>